it's live on the Niger Customs Broadcasting Network. SCBN reaching you from our studio here in Asokoro. The Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. My name is Doi Dia. Now, COVID-19 updates live is designed to bring to you latest updates of the ravaging coronavirus infection in Nigeria and around the world as given by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and, of course, the World Health Organization. We also bring to you latest stories around the ravaging pandemic, so much so that you are informed as well as to be safe especially as the world continues to battle the deadly virus. So, we are ready to begin the conversation on this edition of the program. But before then, as usual, let's take this short break. When we return, we'll begin the discussion proper. We'll go nowhere. But yo, my guy, how far now? Hey, Kazim, this one will come my place this night. What's in the happen? Oh, mo, we get what we do like that this night. Oh. I think we'll enter the place together now. Enter which place? Ah, uh, the party now. Enough booze and cheese. You don't understand? We got to put some lighters in the air. Kazim, put which lighters? But you're waiting now. Kazim, it be like, say, you don't die before. Abi, I think. But yo, why they talk like this? Eh? Why even they wear face masks, Sef? Kazim, the next half, eh? the owners don't contact coronavirus. Ah, ah. Now the man never first get them. Then the wife can't contact her. Now the children don't get them too. Yay! Bayo, you sure have wasted the talk so? I don't believe before. I just do small research. Bayo, where did they get your information from? I see the news for TV now. NCBN News. Say some of these ways where you feel stay safe. Now, to the wear face mask. Uh, you go to wash your hand with soap. You know, anytime we say you touch touch things, you go to sanitize your hand, and uh, you don't go to scratch your face. You go also make sure say you don't go to do hug hug. Just do chop knuckle, and you go maintain a uh, uh, social distance. When you want cough, you go just use your hand, take bend elbow, cover mouth and nose, and when you cough or and uh, when you sneeze, should be you don't hear me so. And that party, eh? You better just forget her more. Kai ba yo. So we no go fi go party again. Kazim, you deaf Abi? Or you can't come out from my ass. By your reason now, mo. Hey God. God. Save me from every form of obituary party. Kazim! You know fit kill me. Welcome back. It's still COVID-19 updates live on the Nigeria Customs Broadcasting Network, NCBN, reaching you live from our studio here in Asokoro, the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. Now, let's begin with the latest updates released by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC. A total of 49 new cases of COVID-19 infection has been released, with a breakdown of 21 from Lagos State, 16 from Rivers, 5 from FCT. Kano State also recorded three new cases, Akwai Bomb 2. Ebony State recorded one and Ikiti one, respectively. Bringing the total confirmed cases of COVID 19 infections since the first index case in the country to 165,901, with 156,459 persons already treated and discharged from the various isolation centers across the country. Now, sadly, the death toll resulting from COVID-19 infection and its complication in the country is 2,067, sad, you may say. Now, on vaccine administration, a total of 1,894,794 jabs of the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccines have been administered to persons across the country, giving a proportion of 94.2%. Now, 
I deliberately and intentionally always like to mention the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine because that is what we received in the country, which of course the Ministry of Health received and it has been uh, of course administered to persons across the country. Efforts are in top gear of course to uh, acquire another tranche of the COVID vaccine from Johnson & Johnson which is produced in America as the producers of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine uh, well not really the owner of the, the patent but India, of course, has been the country where the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine is produced because of the massive plants where the vaccines are produced. But unfortunately, the development in that country has not allowed them to release or perhaps export the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine as they say the development in their country requires that they first take care of their helpless citizens who are in their need of the COVID vaccine. Now, of course, that has been endorsed by the World Health Organization. Even though efforts are in top gear to ensure that other producers of already tested and certified COVID-19 vaccines also step up the game and make it available, especially to third world countries like Nigeria that is also in their need of the COVID-19 vaccine. Well, we are not in the third wave of the COVID-19 infection uh, as speculated and of course raising fears and concern in the public space. However, uh, we still have to be on very high red alerts to ensure that we take all of the measures given very seriously. Now let's move to the global scene where the World Health Organization has released a total number of 638,247 new cases of COVID-19 infection, bringing the total confirmed cases to 164,523,800 infections around the globe. Sadly, the death toll resulting from COVID-19 is 3,412,032. Now, I keep asking myself that when you look at this figure, uh, it's, it's really alarming. It's really alarming having to see that over 3 million persons have died between 2019 till date owing to one ravaging pandemic, which, of course, has crippled a, the economy. When you are looking at the havoc which COVID-19 has wrecked on the world, there is the aspect of the death, the pain which it has brought to families of those who have contracted it. Of course, there is also the aspect of the burden which it has puts on economies around the world as many countries shut down their economy. Of course, you recall that Nigeria also was not left out, especially when we experienced the first wave of the COVID-19 infection where the president declared a total lockdown order which lasted for over uh, two weeks. And of course, the gradual easing also lasted for over six weeks. And when you look at the effect of this, it has, of course, affected revenue generation for the country. It has also affected the, the lifestyle of people. And, you know, a lot of people now still find it very difficult to go back to their normal life because of what COVID-19 has brought to them. Well, just as we're talking about this development, we always like to remember those who are falling also to the cold ends of death as a result of COVID-19. It is really painful. It is sad. It is worrisome. Um, it, it, it's something that no one will ever imagine or pray for. But sadly, it has happened to some people uh, having to lose their loved ones to 
such deadly virus, we can only pray that Almighty God will give them the fortitude to bear the irreparable loss and to have very fond memories of their loved ones, just as we are also praying for repose and eternal rest to those who uh, died as a result of COVID-19. Well, it is not over until it is all over, like they say. So, COVID-19 is very much with us. Of course, when we're talking about COVID-19, we can also not rule out some of the developments which it has brought to the world. Like now that a lot of people now do meetings virtually, you don't have to travel as far as Australia, or America, or Japan for that business meeting. You can always do your meeting virtually and all of that. A lot of business have been transacted online. Well, there are critics who we also say that uh, there are a lot of hackers who are hacking into people's system and that might not be as easy as what it used to be. But then uh, we can always look at the advantage inherent in every situation around us and forge ahead. Now let's continue with our regional breakdown um, as America tops the charts having 63 million 368,315 cases of COVID-19, Europe 53,901,375 million cases, Southeast Asia 29,258,662 million Eastern Mediterranean 9,771,027 million Africa 3 million 425,102. And of course, the last but not the least, Western Pacific, 2,798,651 cases of COVID-19 infection. Those are the figures on your screen, as you can see. Well, we are lucky, like I've been saying on this program, in this part of the world that God, in his infinite mercy, has um, looked down on this country and, of course, has helped us to be able to bring to the barest minimum the spread of COVID-19 infection. Of course, we cannot but also thank the federal government of Nigeria for its effort towards containing the spread of the COVID-19 vaccine, just as we are also appreciating all frontline workers, all frontline workers, including medical practitioners, including civil society organizations, including media outfits, and other partners who have been working tirelessly to ensure that the scourge of coronavirus is nipped in the bud. And as we are doing that also, we must also remember that COVID-19 is not over yet. Now, there is a story which says delays in vaccine rollout puts African lives on hold. Hmm. And the story says the World Health Organization wants delay in the delivery of COVID-19 vaccines to countries in Africa, putting lives at risk and threatening the continued spread of the coronavirus on the continent and across borders. To date, the WHO reports 4.7 million COVID-19 cases across Africa, including 127,000 deaths. Shipments of COVID-19 vaccine to Africa slowed to a trickle earlier this month. Its main supplier, Indian Serum Institute, retained the doses to tackle a devastating surge of domestic cases that has essentially brought the rollout of the life-saving product across Africa to its screening halt. So far, the WHO says only 24 million people in a continent of more than 1 billion have received at least one vaccine dose and 5.5 million have received two doses. WHO Regional Director for Africa, Mashi Diso Mueti, deplores the equities that exist between countries that have access to COVID-19 vaccine and those who do not. Moeti says 
Africa is also suffering from a severe shortage of money to pay for the operational cost of the COVID-19 vaccine rollout. She says urgent action and international solidarity is crucial in ensuring Africa can obtain the vaccines it needs and finance the rollout. Now, it, it, there's been uh, a lot of talks about uh, Africa being in their danger should COVID-19 spread faster than expected. Now, of course, one of the concerns that have been raised also is that of the affordability of COVID-19 vaccines, as, of course, millions of, hundreds of millions of doses will be needed to vaccinate Africans. But interestingly, there are organizations that have stood up to support, which includes, of course, the European Union and other, like the African Union, too, has also stepped up to assist some African countries to ensure that they get the COVID-19 doses of the vaccine. But now the concern is how soon are these vaccines going to be available? Now let's go on a short break. When we return, we have other stories for you. So don't go nowhere. Good morning, sir. Kindly have a seat and put on your face mask. Okay. Oh, wow. Don't be me and you day here. I'll be the virus day here again. Oh, I'll do too much, Jari. Face mask. Oh, guys, say me you put on your face mask properly now. Now, malaria when I they feel like this. Ah. How oh, about now? This protocol, protocol. Do you need water? Yeah, sure. Thank you, madam. Okay. I beg, wear your face, man. I beg. I beg, wear your face, man. I beg. Seriously, guys, COVID 19 is real and you should adhere to all safety protocol. It is not a chin guard. It is not an eyeglass. It is not an earring or a wristband. It is not even an ID card. If you are taking it off, take it off completely from the elastic cord and do not touch the exposed area of the mask. Wash your hands, sanitize your hands, be responsible. Avoid stories that touch you. Welcome back. You're still watching COVID-19 Update Live on the Nigeria Customs Broadcasting Network. NCBN reaching you live from our studio here in Asokoro, the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. Now, the United States of America uh, is to distribute 80 million vaccine doses globally on basis of need. And the story says the United States, United States of America, of course, announced this week that it will share an additional 20 million coronavirus vaccine doses with other countries. In addition to the 60 million it has already committed, U.S. State Department Coordinator for Global COVID Response, Gal Smith, said this during a rapid-fire teleconference. However, Smith emphasized that the United States is working closely with 
the global COVAX facility to determine where the vaccines are needed most and how they can be most equitably distributed. The other points made emphasized despite the fact that the U.S. top adversaries, China and Russia, are ramping up their own vaccine donation around the world. This move by the U.S. is not a case of vaccine diplomacy, Smith stress repeatedly that the U.S. will distribute according to need and not to curry favor. I think that is a good one on the part of the United States of America. Now, there is another headline which says two AstraZeneca shots could be 85 to 90 percent effective, UK data suggests. And the story says two doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine may be around 85 percent to 90 percent effective against symptomatic disease, public health England PHE said on Thursday, while cautioning that it did not yet have enough data to be conclusive. Britain has suffered one of the worst deaths globally from the pandemic, but has also had one of the fastest vaccine rollouts, generating a lot of data about the use of the shots in real world setting. It was the first country to roll out AstraZeneca vaccine, which faced questions over the construction of its clinical trial, the efficacy of the vaccine and the optimal gap between doses of its shots. Public Health England said the preliminary findings were the first of its kind on the effectiveness of two doses of AstraZeneca in real world setting, but cautioned that it had low confidence in the findings and the results will be inconclusive until more evidence is gathered. In a weekly surveillance report, Public Health England said the estimated effectiveness of the AstraZeneca vaccine invented at the University of Oxford was 89% compared to unvaccinated people. That compares to 90% estimated effectiveness against symptomatic disease for the Pfizer, of course, um, the Pfizer vaccine as AstraZeneca welcomed the preliminary findings. Britain has been rolling out the shots manufactured by Pfizer and AstraZeneca since December and January, respectively, and in April also started developing Moderna's vaccine. Public Health England said there was a small reduction in vaccine effectiveness from 10 weeks after the first dose of the Pfizer shot before the second shot is given. Well, we cannot over the, perhaps overstretch the need for us uh, to have enough vaccine in circulation for pressing. Well, we know countries around the world, especially world leaders, are putting it together with the World Health Organization to ensure that people around the world get vaccinated. So, we want to wish them the very best. But as we continue to say, we are in Nigeria. All of the developments around the world are there to give us the needed information and, of course, to teach us the needed lesson. So let's learn from the countries, of course, that have advanced in the handling of COVID-19 infection, and of course, those that are presently battling with the resurgence of COVID-19. Well, we'll continue to pray that God in his infinite mercy will look down on this country and help our government to be able to, of course, contain the further spread of COVID-19 infection in our society, just as we are also asking you Nigerians to support the government in order to achieve success in this regard. Remember, COVID-19 is real. Try as much as possible to stay safe for your sake and for the sake of your loved ones. I'll see you 
some other time on the program. It's been a nice time having you being part of this program. My name is Doing Dia. Bye-bye for now.